Hello, welcome to Flourish ICT Academy, data analytics training for beginner. That is the subject that we have the video I'm making for you today. So if you're aspiring to go into the field of data analytics, or you want to be a data scientist, well, this is a good place to begin, okay? I'm gonna be showing you in this video today the difference between data analysis, data analytics, and data science. A lot of time, people miss these three words together. They are not the same thing, though they are very related. So you need to know what is data analysis, what is data analytics, and then what is data science. That is part of what you are going to be learning in this training today. So if you are a beginner and you want to go into the field of data analysis, data analytics, or data science, where well, I congratulate you because you are going to learn a lot from this video today. In addition to that, I'll be showing you a different data application, data analytics application, where it is applicable and where you can apply it. So that is why we encourage you to ensure that you watch this video to the end. We are gonna be looking at characteristics of data as well, the evolution of data and many more that I have in stock for you in this video. So please do where to watch to the end. And if you have any question whatsoever, you can go ahead and reach out by dropping a comment in the comment section of this video, or you can go ahead and do a message on WhatsApp by reaching out on WhatsApp. And then you can also visit our website to learn more about Flourish ICT Academy and other training packages that we have. And then you can visit our YouTube channel as you're already watching one of the video. There are many other videos that has been there and many are coming as well. So if you have not subscribed to this channel, go ahead and click the subscription button now so you can be notified when I release the next training lesson. Whether you are a beginner or you are an experienced user, you are going to learn a lot from this training today. So I want to encourage you to stay glued to your screen and let's take the journey together. Now it has been said that data is the oil of the 21st century. What that means is that what data is to an organization today it is exactly what oil is to a nation. You know what it means when a nation discover oil well. That is a lot of financial fortune for that nation. But the oil well in itself has no benefit until it is refined. You know, it's a crude oil. It has to be dig. It has to be brought out. It has to be refined before it is useful. The same thing with data. Data in itself, even though it is the oil of the 21st century, it can bring a fortune to an organization, but that data in itself, in its raw format, it is not useful until that data is refined, is analyzed, and with it, we can now make a predictive decision. So if you learn about data and you know how to manage data, you become a data analyst, you become a data scientist, there is room for you everywhere because of the value that data actually brings to an organization which we are going to be looking at in detail in this training today. Now, let's look at the evolution of data analyst. Before now, in fact, there was no much about computer in those days. There was no much about technology in those days. However, we have mathematicians, we have statisticians that actually pick up a data and they teach us what to do on the data. The value of data as at that time is not really being maximized organization are not tapping into the benefit because there is even no technology to support what data can do. So that is where data began from. Now, due to the growth of data, the radical growth and improvement in technology, then we now have what we call data mining. Now, from just, you know, using your mathematics, calculating the mean, the mode, the median of the data, and try to get, you know, an insight from a data we now have what you call a data mining. Now, the job of a data miner, if you want to say, is to extract the pattern from a data because the data that you have is, as a raw data is actually not useful. That data needs to be extracted. That data we need to check on the data and look at the pattern. What are the patterns in the data? And as a result of that, you can discover the data and you can discover the pattern that is in a data that has been gathered due to a new and improved model. So that takes us to predictive analytics. Who are the predictive analytics that you are talking about? 
Now, they develop and deploy more accurate forecasts, okay? They can look at the data that has been mined and looking at the pattern and be able to forecast that, okay, based on this data that we have looked at in the last five years, this is exactly what is going to happen either in an economy. This is why it is very vital for an organization to have data. When you have data and the data is being looked at, the data is extracted and we look at the date, the pattern in the data, maybe in the last one year, the pattern in the data in the last two years, then it is easier with more technology, with an improved model on technology to be able to predict. Okay, so with deploying more technology, we can forecast that, okay, as a result of this data, this has happened in the last five years, this is what is going to happen in the next one year. Now, big data characteristics, there are five of them. We are going to be talking in detail about them. Business needs an improvement in technology is now what led to what we call data science. Data science work with various two, data and complex business requirement. You are going to be talking about that in detail. Now, let's look at the difference. What is the difference between data analysis, data analytics, and data science? So you don't get confused when you hear this word. Data analysis is defined as a process of cleaning, transforming, and modeling data to discover useful information for business decision making. Take note of that word. Okay, the process of cleaning, transforming, and modeling data. Why data analytics is more focused? Analytic is devoted to realizing actionable insight that can be applied immediately to drive business decision. So it's more focused, it's an improvement on data analysis. A data is being analyzed, it's being cleansed, it's being transformed and modeled. Data analytics is focused on actionable insights that could be drawn from the data that has been transformed in order to be able to make immediate business decision. Why data science is an umbrella term for a group of feed that are used to mine large data set. So in data science, we talk about machine learning. We talk about the artificial intelligence, search engine, engineering, robotics. Those are categorized under data science. Now let's talk about the bust of data. When we talk about the bust of data, we are talking about the boom in the amount of data that are being generated today especially with over 5 billion internet users worldwide today and the number keep increasing so also the number you know the amount of data that are being generated now this is the era of internet of 18 iot and with the smartphone evolution as well this has led to a large increase in the amount of data now let's take a look at this in 2011 look at this chart and then you see the position of data the amount of data that are being generated within that particular year. And then coming into 2012, you can see the data. There's an increment in data. But in 2013, there's an exponential growth from 2016. Even the number keep increasing to today. Let me give you an example. Facebook alone, according to report, produces approximately about 4,000 terabytes daily of data. Why X, formerly known as Twitter, Ghana around 500 million trees daily. This is a month of data that are being generated today. In 2024, for example, on the half ridge, it was recorded that TikTok video produces approximately 7.35 terabytes of data daily. Why YouTube hosted over 720,000 hours of video daily in 2023. So that was the videos that were hosted daily in 2023 just on the YouTube platform alone. Why Google processes around 3.5 billion searches daily? Oh, that amounts to about 20 petabytes of data. That is a lot and a lot of data. Now imagine what an average household of four can create when it comes to data. Because every day if you're on the WhatsApp, you see, and then you belong to a different platform, you see amount of data that are coming in, amount of information that are going on on the internet. So today with the evolution of technology and uh, with the evolution of smartphone and then internet of a thing, there is a bust in the data compared to what it used to be maybe in the last 10 years. 
Now, imagine the number of people that go on the Google every day that are making a search for one thing or the other. I don't know if you have thought about it before. How did Google bring to you what you searched for yesterday? It's because of the data that has been generated, the historical data about your action, about your activities on the internet. That could help them to predict exactly what exactly could be your area of interest. And that is why you see a lot of videos, a lot of content have been suggested to you. Now let's turn our attention to the characteristics of big data. This is often referred to as the five V's of data. We have big data today, just like we have discussed uh, in the previous slide. I, I told you that based on the data that have been generated from different sources, from the Facebook, the amount of data, the enormous amount of data that have been generated from different sources, this is what has led to the evolution of big data or the bust in the data. Now, this data that we now have that is categorized as big data also come with some of its challenges. The first one that we are going to look at from the five Vs of data is the volume. When we talk about the volume, we are talking about the size of the data. How big is the data that are being generated? Remember that the data are coming from different sources on a daily basis. It could be from social media platform. It could be from the network. It could be from your call log. Different platform today, data are being generated every day, and that has resulted into the volume, the bigness of the data today. That comes with a challenge. The number one challenge with the volume of the data that we have today is the storage. The storage is the number one challenge that we have with the big data. Now, imagine this. If you just buy a phone and then you set up your Google email on the phone, you are entitled to 15 gigabytes of space, a storage place space on the cloud. Now, when you take your phone and then you go around your smartphone and then your device, you are snapping pictures, you are saving the contact that you are meeting, and then you are recording video automatically, all of these are being back up in the cloud. Now, look at your WhatsApp. If you belong to so many groups and you are getting a lot of messages, video, people are posting on a daily basis, that is being downloaded to your device, maybe, and then you have that also being stored to the cloud, to your 15 gig. Now, before you know, you know, before long, you see that the space is filled up. Why? The 15 gig that is assigned to you from the free account that you have is already exhausted by the volume of data that you are generating on your device on a daily basis. So you will be alerted either to upgrade or you will be forced to delete some content. Otherwise, you will not be able to use your email account at that moment that it reached 100%. Okay, so that is one of the challenges of big data that we have. The second challenge is actually the processing. The bigger the data, the more time it's going to take in order to process the data. The third challenge is the cost. Like I gave an example of, you know, a free Google email that comes with 15 gig of uh, storage. Now, if you need to continue at the rate at which you are generating the data without compromising, you know, deleting any of the data, then you need to pay a cost by buying additional space. That also happened to organization. This is one of the reasons why companies are now moving to the cloud because they don't have enough space to be able to retain or contain the amount of data that are being generated that are needed. And the last one under the challenges is the governance, data governance. When we talk about data governance, what are we referring to? We are talking about the security of the data. The data that you have in storage, you must also ensure that they are secure so that a bad actor does not have access to data, especially when you have what you call the PII or SPI or people that are, you know, you are storing it, then you need to take security very serious if you don't want to come under the armor of the law. That's the first one. Now, let's turn our attention to the second characteristics of big data, which is variety. When we talk about variety, we are talking about data that are being generated from different sources. Before now, you know, we only have data from maybe databases, uh, Microsoft Excel, that's from the worksheet. And then those are the sources that we have. But today, we have data coming in different form, from PDF, from email, from audio, from photos, from video. These are different sources whereby data are coming today. We have different data and then different format of data. And this has also led to the challenges of standardization. So if you are going to store data, you know, where you are going to store the data on the database, 
you are going to store the video. It's not where you are going to store the document. So there is a challenge of standardization in the data and also in processing of the data because there are variety of data and you have all of them coming together. So that is the second characteristics of big data, variety. And because of this variety as well, data have been structured. We have what you now call structured data, semi-structured data, and even unstructured data based on the various type of data that have been generated on daily basis. Now, the third one that we are going to talk about is veracity. When we talk about veracity, this is referring to the quality and reliability of the data that are being generated or that are being stored. Dealing with veracity can be a lot of challenge in the sense that the data, you know, can be noisy, can be incomplete, or it can contain an error. And if you go ahead and just work with that data like that, without filtering the data, it can lead to incorrect analysis and flaw in decision making. So also today, one of the characteristics of big data is veracity. This is quality and the reliability of the data. So you need to ascertain that. And the next one, the fourth one from the five V's of data we are talking about now is velocity. Now, when we talk about the velocity, we are talking about the rate, the speed at which data are being generated today. And there are some time that you want your data to be in real time. I mean, the analysis to be in real time. But the speed at which the data is being generated is actually so much that it's affecting the real time you know, analysis of data. And then the last one we are going to be talking about is the value. The value of the data. Now, it is important for me to state here that it is not all the data that are generated that will be processed and will be stored. No. It is only the valuable and reliable data that you can store, process, and analyze. So how do you identify which data is valuable, which data is reliable? That is another challenge on its own. However, you can only get an insight from valuable data, not just the volume of the data. From the volume of the data, now you have to analyze the data and be able to filter out the ones that are relevant and others that are not relevant. So in summary, if I'm going to summarize the five V's of data, we talk about volume, that has to do with how much is the data itself. We talk about variety, what kind of data are being generated. We talk about velocity, that's how to do with how frequent or how real time is the data. And veracity, how accurate and applicable is the data. Why we talk about value, how valuable is the data. So those are the five characteristics of the big data, which we refer to as the 5V. Now, we have the big question. The big question is this. Who are the people that is going to do all of the things that we talk about right now? Data analysts. They work on the data. This is why you are needed as a data analyst. Now, do you want to learn more about data analytics? Your answer is yes. I would like you to check the description section of this video, and then you're going to see a link there. You can reach out and then, or you drop a chat on the WhatsApp, and then you go to our website as well. You are going to be able to have one-on-one -on -one personalized section where we are going to have a live data to be able to train with, and then you are going to know how to actually uh, train your algorithm with data that we feed in order to predict what is likely to happen in the future. Thank you for taking your learning journey with Flourish ICT Academy. If you have not subscribed to this channel, go ahead and click the subscription button now. And if you have learned some things in this video, I'd like you to like it. Go ahead and share it as well. See you in the next lesson.